future. I'm hoping that it merges these videos and we're going to find out. It is. How about that? It is going to hopefully... Oh, hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and you were on the lifeboat. You know what's really funny, uh, Johnny Scoville, is I got up, and uh, I went in the other room. You know why I did? I'll tell you. I went in the other room to get my iPad, the, uh, the new one. And uh, oddly enough, I don't know that I brought it back with me, but... On the bright side, I've got the, and I do mean the, Johnny Scoville with me. And uh, he's going to go and retrieve that, that bad boy from me. Let's see here. Let's see here. Well, hey, everybody. That would be uh, just Pauline. Is that you? Look at that. There we go. There you go. All right, people. Thank you for stopping in. I'm, I'm Captain Mr. Tommy Wolf. Scoville. Yeah, you are Mr. Wolf. You got a problem? Yeah. I'll fix it, man. Yeah, no, no. You need a no. laptop? You need a tablet? I'll do that. We're gonna we're gonna talk about them in a minute. Uh, oh no, no, come on! What are you doing? I, uh, technology is not my friend, people. Hold on one second. Let's see. Go to your channel. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. So we're gonna talk about some numbers today that aren't gonna cheer you up. Um, normally, I'm a ray of sunshine. You know what I mean? I'm known for it. I'm one of those guys that can cheer a person up when they're having a bad day. Am I not? Not on camera, right? No. Smart Alec. He was looking at the camera, giving it the, uh, oh, that, man. Yeah, don't put him on camera, Calhoun. I, don't, I think he's cut off for the day. Uh, hey, Body Illusion, good to see you. Kelly Gerling, how are you? Just Pauline, Davey, Matrix Rabbit, what's happening, Doc? Good to see you. Third Eye Open, Dennis, Body Illusion, and Johnny, yeah. Uh, Narcoleptic Chihuahua Production. Sandy, Wendy, what's happening? Yarn Prepper. That would be the Yarn Prepper. Uh, Info Dump Truck. Do you love that name? Teresa G. Cosmic Christie. What's crapping? Sorry, it just sounded so... What's the word I'm looking for? Alliteration, I think, is the word I'm looking for. The Clinkling of Ice Cubes. Ah, wow. Have you tasted that lemonade? <laughs> Sorry, I got I, me I right. prefer... What do you prefer? Oh yeah, look at that. He's uh, he's showing for a little uh, a little product. Uh, are you trying to work it in there? He says I prefer the Johnny Scoville. This will burn Try you beverage. Nicer. The Johnny Scoville. This will burn you beverage. Yeah, look at that. He's never looked that good in real life. Sorry, yeah, but you have, real. you have never looked that good in real life. When I walk, I go just look, just look here. You know what? Instead of a business card, you know what I mean? When people are like, do you have a business card? I don't, but I have a bottle of energy drink I can let you have because you look remarkable on that bottle of energy drink. Um, I was touched on this the other morning. The statistics on, uh, on rehabilitation run 10%. They can go a little bit below. Sometimes they can go just a little bit above. But real statistics on real rehabilitation of any kind, I don't care how you do it, inpatient, outpatient, AA, NA, anything like this, right? Any kind of, you go out and try this, you're going to get 10% who are successful and 90% who fail. That's with help or that's without help. So you got to start asking yourself, why the hell did we bother hanging out with a bunch of people? <laughs> if it doesn't work. Now, the truth is, it does work. And the numbers are skewed, right? These numbers are depressing, but make no mistake, they're skewed. The, the numbers from facilities, you can find people today who are going to tell you they got an 85% success rate. And they can tell you that. Do you know why, Johnny Skill? Tell me why. I'll tell you why. Because there's no way to document whether or not it's BS. What are you going to do? Hand over the client list? Tell me who the person is, what they were addicted to, and uh, their phone number. Eh? Let me contact them. Oh, well, we can't do that. Right? No, we can't give out that kind of information. And for that reason, I can say anything I want, can I? For instance, allegedly, the lifeboat, you know, has a 111% success rate. Pretty stout. That's yeah. Pretty gangster. You know how you get to that number, don't you? The 11% that failed the first time, we got them sober twice. Nice. Yeah, doubled them down. Truth of the matter is this. The people who get sober are people who want to get sober. 
So you find a place like the lifeboat and their success rate is going to be a hell of a lot higher. You know why? Because we're not twisting anybody's arm to make them stay here, right? We're not forcing anybody to step foot on the lifeboat and decide they want to change their life. We don't do that. We don't go out and beat the bushes on, you know, in the street. We don't drag people kicking and screaming in here. Now, we don't turn people away either. I think which makes us a little bit unique, right? We don't run people off for say, oh, I don't know, having the uh, temerity, you know, the audacity to uh, to maybe stumble a little bit, right? God forbid. God forbid. Or if you're taking uh, medication to help you stay sober. God, God forbid. Right? Wouldn't want those people around. You know how many people show up here and say, I was kicked out of NA because I'm on Suboxone? What? Huh? I got kicked out of the uh, oncology ward for uh, having yeah, some chemo know. done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for getting one of those treatment things. Tampa B, good to see you. Surviving together. What's happening? My sister, George. Okay. I'm going to go with Georgette, maybe, or Georgie, or Georgie, hey, they, Georgie, girl. Miss Sunrise Dawn, hope you're doing better. Tree Hugger, nice to see you. Valerie 102. Hey, that's Cricket. Chow Yum's Mutt. I know what you're thinking. Cricket, what's happening? Uh, Mischief Manage, good to see you. Jen Marie, always an honor. Lacey, good to see you. WP. Kim Leanne, good to see you. I'm not lying to you about this stuff. These numbers get all kinds of messed up. But if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you've ever Googled any of these places and you think, you know what? I got bulletproof insurance. I could probably get my insurance company to cover some of these places. Let me give you a little inside info, right? If you happen to come across a place that tells you something really cool, like, guess what? We can cure your addiction, right? Run. Like the wind. I assure you, you cannot cure addiction. Now, people are going to write to me tonight. Oh, they're going to write to me. And they're going to say, you're wrong. I was cured. No, you were somebody that abused drugs. Then you stop using. Right? Those people exist. Reese will tell you. She did meth every day for two years. Was not a drug addict. Was sure as hell abusing the crap out of drugs. You can abuse drugs without being a drug addict. You are hip to this concept, yeah? We know a lot more about this than we used to this disease thing. Our numbers are going to be great here because when you're ready to quit, you actually do quit. Trouble is when we start looking at these numbers, we get this huge pool of people that have been dumped into this. I'm going to quit pool by the court system. They don't have any desire to get sober. None. So unfortunately they're going to skew the, the, the numbers, something fierce. Why do 90% uh, of people in, a, in NA fail? Because 9 out of 10 people in NA don't want to be there. Keep it real. We've all gone to these meetings. How many times you see a guy like this with a piece of paper? If you want to be at that meeting, you don't need a piece of paper signed. You're doing that because your probation officer needs that piece of paper signed. Question. Do you think it's often that people get court-ordered uh, rehab? And along the way, they, the light goes on and they catch their way. 10% of the time. So even... That's, that would be my gut, is about 10% of the time, the people that go through that door. I went in there with the best of intentions every time I was court ordered. I went in and said, I'm going to do this, man. I'm going to do this. And I remember sitting in a room, and I've told the story a bunch of times. I, I relapsed by making eye contact with another junkie who looked at me with the look like this. <laughs> like can you believe this crap and i gave him the yeah this is hard to believe look and the next thing you know without a word being spoken we were getting up and walking to the parking lot once it was a man and once it was a woman and both times we just went out in the car got in the, got in the car and started getting high sadly if you don't want to be there right not only are you not going to be successful but you're probably going to screw up the people around you it doesn't take a whole lot to poison a group. You know, there's a reason we boot people real quick. Because it doesn't take a lot. We're asking people to open up. We're asking people to talk about really heavy crap from their life. Yeah? What's well, a big deal, isn't it? I think it's a big deal. You think it's a big deal? It's a big deal. It really is. It's a big deal. So... 
you kind of got to get a group of people that uh, that are all being kind to one another, right? All kind of pulling in the same direction. If everybody wants to be there, that's freaking fantastic. But if you got 30 people in the room and 20 of them have been ordered there by court, I promise you, even if you want to get sober, you got this big chip on your shoulder. This, I don't, you know, why are you here? Because I'm made, and they made me come here, man. <laughs> You have to understand that the act of just hearing that you're made to do it, you're automatically in rebellion. I promise. I've watched this happen so many times. So many times. I'm not signing anybody's paper here on the lifeboat. You feel me? We're not forcing anybody onto the lifeboat to try to get sober. People come here because they're tired of being tired. And guess what? Guess what? The failure rate for everything is 90% or higher. I'm not kidding. I was a public speaker. I used to go out on stage and without fail, Johnny can tell you, because it's the same thing in a, in a boiler room or on stage. He's done it. You're going to get a, a question. And the question is going to be, what percent of people who buy this are successful? Heard that one? Right? It is the go-to question. It's what they think they're going to floor you with. And I used to say, 99 out of 100 people that do this are going to fail. You know why? The exact same reason. 99% of people that say that they're going to lose weight aren't going to lose weight. 99% of people who say that they are going to get in shape aren't going to get in shape. They're not going to do anything necessary to actually be successful in whatever their goal was. They're not. They're going to do the exact same things every single day that they've done for the first four decades of their life. But... This time it's going to be different, right? This time they're going to get in shape. This time they're going to quit smoking. This time they're not going to, I promise you, you want to change, change everything. Change everything. These numbers don't mean Richard to me. <laughs> Feel me? They don't. These numbers don't mean anything to me. Because I don't care if, if the failure rate is 98%, I'm going to be in the two. I'm going to be in the two that get in shape. I'm going to be in the two that lose weight. I'm going to be in the two that stay sober. I promise you. I'm going to be in the two that communicate with the people that I love instead of screaming at them. If, if you're going to do something, I don't care if you're fishing, get good at it. <laughs> right? Spend a little time. Maybe read a book. I don't know. Maybe read a book. There's something to be said, Johnny Scovel. There is something to be said for taking a little passion in the things that you believe in. Eh. Eh. So don't let this 10% thing bum you out. I personally think you do this one, right? I'm in that 10. I guarantee you, I'm in that 10. The 90 percenters, they're not coming on the lifeboat. They're not. The 90 percenters are out buying bags of dope, right? They're at the bar tonight. Now, you know the fun people, Johnny Skillville? The fun people are the overlappers, right? Those are the people that are fun. The fun people are the ones that are getting loaded today, right? You got people that are getting loaded today. Those people are a good time, right? Right? Because they're get they they got a buzz, but they've stepped foot onto the lifeboat. It's because those are people who are unhappy with where they're at in life. That is the window of opportunity that we refer to. When the window of opportunity opens for somebody who's getting high, during that that window of opportunity, you get this clarity where you go, you know what, my life sucks, and I really need to do something about it. It's the reason we'll shut down a live feed, right? It's the reason that. Most people hate me, <laughs> right? Because in the middle of what I'm doing, I'm probably going to take a phone call. That's uh, kind of how it's going. I have a wireless caller on the line. You know, it's almost funny because everyone on planet Earth is a wireless caller. There are no wires. Are there wires, Johnny Scobo? Well, 
I haven't seen water in a while. Okay, I tell you what, uh, you don't have to tell us your name, but you got to tell us what your screen name is. If it uh, happens to be the same, great. If not, I think I know who I'm talking to, though. This is Jen Marie. Well, the ah, there you go. Hi, Jen. How are you? I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm okay. Um, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Good. I'm happy to do that. I wanted to make an announcement, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Saturday afternoon, so that's Saturday, April 6, 2024, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, my channel between the between the cracks will be live streaming Steve Molesky's funeral at the at the request of his family. Thank you. That's all. And you said that's going to be. Could you could you give that time one more time for everybody? This is the yep. sixth. Yep. That's, it's yep between the cracks on April sixth at one p.m. Eastern. So that'll be noon central, eleven mountain, ten Pacific. That's as mathy as I can get. It'll be uh, yeah, that's correct. That's perfect. You you nailed it. You nailed it, Jen Murray. You Thanks, nailed man. It. Yeah. Not well. That's not so easy. There's a lot of uh, there's there's math involved, right? And, uh, yeah. Well, I'll take the hit and do some math for Steve. That's, God bless that's you. the only thing I'll do. Yeah, well, God for bless you. Steve. And uh, All right, I'm going to go back to paying attention and making the thumbnail. And I just want you, and I know Johnny's in the room, I want you guys to know I love you. Thanks. I already told you I love you and everybody else. I love you madly. Well, love you too. Um, and thanks for, uh, thanks for doing that. Thanks for, you know, taking us to, along on that. Right. Absolutely. I wouldn't have I'll it any other way, buddy. Okay. Thank you. Have a great night. All right. Love you. Love you. You know, that's the, uh, that's the lifeboat, uh, people. That's the spanky. That's the, uh, that's the lifeboat. You know, the, the, uh, the, the angels, you know, that were off, uh, off with Steve at the, uh, at the end there. It's, uh, it's just not a YouTube channel. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. You know, I, uh, I know I brag about the about the lifeboat, probably to the point where people are really sick of it. But um, there are channels, and and then there are I don't know what we are, but you know it's a family. It's a uh, it really is different. It's there. You know, if you guys were uh, were subscribers, I don't know. I don't think I would still be doing it. I really don't. It's just a it's a very different thing. It's a very different feel, and uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be beautiful that uh, that the lifeboat can. Uh, can be there when uh, when they lay Steve to rest. Mira Dira, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Russ, what's happening, my brother? Layla. Good to see you. Matrix Rabbit, how are you? Becca Jean, good to see you. Life's good. I love that. It's a great name. Boy, oh boy, is that lemonade tart. Taekwondo, good to see you. Crispy, what's happening? Sweet Liberty, how are you? Hannah the Blind Kitty, always an honor. Um, good to have you here. We talked yesterday. We talked yesterday about routine. And uh, there were people that were asking questions concerning uh, concerning routine. Um, it is a lack of routine is the enemy of sobriety, I promise. Right? Uh, one of the things that, uh, that keeps people sober is getting into a program. Right? So they call it the joint. And out here in the real world, um, you know, they probably refer to it as a routine. But in prison, it's called a program. Right. And you meet guys and they either have a program or they don't. And the guys you meet that don't have programs live miserable freaking lives. Right. They really do. They live horrible lives. The guys that break up their time and make sure that they work out. Right. That they, and they're doing yoga or they're doing, you know, some other uh, other type of workout that works on 
stretching, right? You know, not, not simply I'm trying to get as big as I possibly can above the waist, you know, which is very often what, uh, what transpires in prison, but having some kind of balance in life. I, uh, I talk to people on the regular that, uh, that will say to me, I, uh, you know, I'm struggling with, uh, with this, or I'm struggling with X, Y, or Z, man, get up and go for a walk. I promise you people, the, uh, I, or people will say, um, people will talk about uh, where they live or walking in my neighborhood stuff or whatever the case may be. I walked, right? Four steps, took a left-hand turn, right? And a pivot and then walked back four more steps. Sorry, people, but... Uh, Calhoun loves it when I do that too, but I have a five. So I was just checking to see who that was. I apologize. But getting a routine in place, uh, doing the same things again and again and again, and doing it in the same time frame. Um, this is the stuff that's going to keep you sober, or it's the stuff that's going to absolutely derail you. It makes a hell of a lot of sense when people start talking about how idle hands are the devil's workshop, right? It's a fact. Um, and anyone that's ever struggled uh, with any kind of a substance problem can tell you the stories of what it feels like when, when the moment comes on, right? You start getting that overwhelming feeling like uh, your body wants to jump out of its skin, right? You start getting that, uh, that feeling like if you don't use in the, uh, in the immediate future, it always happens when you've got nothing to, uh, to do. It always happens when you got time on your hands, when you're sitting and staring at the wall, when you're at work chugging away, when you're doing things, when your brain is engaged, these things don't happen. This isn't, uh, this isn't Captain Tommy's theory, by the way. I promise you this is a fact. If you keep yourself engaged, right, your odds of getting loaded. This is why probation officers are pricks when it comes to things like, guess what? You're getting a job, right? You're going to have a 40-hour a week gig. Because that 40 hours a week is 40 hours that he does not have to worry or she does not have to worry about you getting loaded, right? Chances are you're not going to, now people get high before work. I mean, there are people, there are idiots, but sorry, people. Um, I will is what I meant by that. Um, I'm sorry. I'm talking to my, uh, my agent, my producer, my manager, kind of a big deal. I don't know if you've heard. I do. do you watch the YouTube? You know? I've heard of it. Yeah, have you heard of it? The YouTube. I've been referring to it as the YouTube. Hey, Scoob, what's happening? Good to see you. Taekwondo, always a pleasure. Randa. <laughs> you would have loved that. Castrol, what's happening? There's my friend Dennis from Boston. Kristen Melinda, were you late? I don't remember saying hello to Kristen Melinda. I usually remember saying hello to Kristen Melinda, but I, uh, I don't remember. If you're late... Let me find out what's happening, Miss R. Uh, Annika's mom. Love that name. Kelly Girling, how are you? Really down lately. I'm stuck in my house all day, every day. Just called my daughter to see if I could uh, start going. Let me see here. Going to her house every day to work on my book. Uh, she works from home. Start tomorrow. I like it, Kelly. I like it. Right? Take action. Get out. Start doing something, right? Go out there and start to uh, find another place to type. Johnny needs to, uh, when he writes, he kind of has to sequester. Is that the right word? Uh, I mean, you, you definitely remove yourself from all of society, huh? yeah? Yeah. We, uh, he gets, he puts himself up away from everyone else and just sort of goes. <coughs> sequester. And the situation is... I'm getting no, uh, no. I'm getting Googled. No, not even in the second. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So Don't let me hang in. Tiberius was sequestered on an island. Is one uh, another one is take legal possession of assets until a debt has been paid or until claims have been met. Power of courts to sequester the assets. No. Man, you were sequestered on an island while you wrote the book. It Sounds works. Like a bad thing. It works. <laughs> no, I think I think you should probably be sequestered on an island to write the book. Lake, I think that that's won't be bad. What? A lake. A lake. A lake will work. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, what did I say? A mountain. Yeah. Yeah, mountain, lake, whatever, desert. 
I just, I just want you away from uh, from the general population. I don't want you to be able to, to go down the street to a Taco Bell, right? Or something like civilization, because nothing like civilization to derail somebody working. You know what I'm saying? Get in there, get your nose to the grind wheel while I'm here playing with the cat. Boy, if you haven't seen Johnny's uh, most recent video of Squirrel Nut Zipper uh, cleaning herself, oh, man. Okay. The slow motion uh, um, kitty videos. Really tired of my cat uh, getting, you know what, outed. She's getting out to my uh, to my brother. Kind of bumming me out a little bit. I'll tell you something. She likes it. Wow. Uncalled for. I pay her. Uncalled for. I don't even like my brother. Uh, I don't even like my brother. Um, sorry, hold on. Hey, Scoob, I hope you're doing all right, huh? Hang in there. Walking feels good, uh, so good. Outside, breathing fresh air, interacting with the environment. Cheers me up every time, says my sister, George. You know what, George? I got to agree with you. Uh, there is something to be said for getting outside. I have been uh, working out more in the last four or five months than I have since leaving... Um, the uh, the Gray Bar Motel, right? the House of Many Doors. In the uh, when I was incarcerated, I worked out for about three or four hours a day, right? Because you have the, nothing but time on your hands. So, if you work out for three or four hours a day, you guarantee that when eight thirty rolls around and they start considering turning the lights off, because the uh, they lock the unit down. You can actually turn off your own lights, but they lock the unit down at uh, at like nine o'clock, nine thirty. And usually, your cellmate, unless he's a real cool dude, he wants those lights out at about nine, nine thirty two. Now, you can everybody's got a little book light, right? So you can read without bothering your cellmate or doing or doing whatever. But uh, you're you're ready to collapse. You know what I mean? If you do it right, and that's how guys do their time. You know, they, they work out to the point where when that eight o'clock rolls around and you go in there and lay down, it's over, right? You wake up in the morning and you start it all over again. And it makes a lot of sense if you think about it, people, right? You ever been laying in bed and you can't sleep? Huh? Think, think a lot of pleasant thoughts, do you? <laughs> huh? When you can't sleep and you're laying in bed, that's, the, that's such a great time to be a human being, isn't it? That's when you think to yourself, boy, you know what? I have hit it out of the park as a person. You know what I mean? Let's go over the highlights I've had in life because there's been a lot of them. You know, you lay in bed unable to sleep and you think to yourself, boy, have I screwed up. Huh? Let's think of all the ways I could have done better. Uh, so because that kind of thought process can get a person uh, inside. Ants have turbochargers in prison. What's that? Ants have turbochargers. Oh, yeah. Ants, ants in prison go like this. <laughs> right? I mean, it's that, Yeah. Yeah, they're not uh, they're not your average everyday run of the mill ants. You feel me? They are not normal ants. They are not what you would call normal everyday run of the mill ants. You feel me? These these puppies tend to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, steroided out. You follow? Horrible, horrible. So to keep that from happening. <laughs> Do you like the horrible? Oh. Gorgeous. Uh, to keep that from haploid of it, so that you you drop. I am absolutely working out uh, more now than uh, than I have since those days, which were admittedly silly. I'm not going to lie to you. Those days were not. Um, it wasn't smart. I was doing that those stupid kind of workouts where. It's all. It's everything you do is a test of manhood, kind of stuff. Here is a little different. I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm trying to keep my weight at um, at a place that stops that atrial flutter stuff from going on. And you may have noticed I haven't been to the hospital in a very long time. I have been considerably healthier in the uh, in the ticker. <laughs> considerably help. Considerably healthier in the ticker, you know, which isn't such a bad thing. What does that say? Oh, sorry. I thought so, it said uh, something rank on your shirt. What? Learning a Nugent song. 
real quick, I'm going to show you this for a second. Wow. Isn't that like Kathleen Wearness? Oh, Riley, my goodness. Riley, whatever it is. Yeah. Johnny Scoville says that um, that the Motor name? City Madman looks like Eileen Warnos. Um, Calhoun, can you pull up a photo? I don't know if you could do that while we're live. I mean, I'll send a picture. I'll well, send we're doing it completely different. Yeah, I don't know if you can do that. But, man, like, you got to work on that, Ted. Sorry. Beg your pardon? Yeah, no, he, uh, it's not a good look. He looks a lot like Eileen Warnos. Um, account. No, um, please. Nobody's alone. Eh? Please. Where are we at? Account for somebody. I can't account for nothing. Account for J S V I D. Hi, I have watched for a year and this is my first comment. Wow. I'm sorry it took a year for you to pop your head up and say hello, but I'm glad that you did. It's a great way to meet people here on the boat, right? It really is. I'm honored that you have showed up a, for a year, right? Without uh, starting to interact. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's kind, but I promise you, you you've gotten the, what you're going to get out of this channel. You're going to get out of hanging out with the crew. <laughs> that's uh, that really is where the magic in this is. And sometimes, you know what? We can lose that for real. I think there that, if you're not in the mix or if you think, you know what, that's a group of people that all know each other. You know what I mean? And they've been around together forever. You have no idea how many people have been here for three days because that's how the boat is, right? People tend to welcome one another. Um, did I leave seven thought uh, on hold too long? I'm sorry. That could have been me. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I did get a text that said, um, You've got a call, but I, I started to talk about something, and I apologize. I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm not for what I'm looking for. Actually, I'm not asking you. Um, ninjins, ah, but of course. Nice, nice. Miss Sunrise Dawn's uh, Torty came over to check out the. Uh, to check out the screen while I was uh, doing my stuff. I'll tell you what, that uh, that happens more often than you would. Uh, so many people say to me that um, that the cats come up to the uh, the screen while I'm talking. I am the cat whisperer. I am a large hairless cat. Um, no, I mean it. I really am. I'm a uh, large hairless cat. So. As I have probably told most of you, I was going out of uh, town this weekend. Uh, a slight change of plans. I'm not going out of town this weekend. Speaking of numbers, 46... Uh, I'm sorry. 46.8 million. 16.7% of Americans aged 12 and older battled a substance use disorder in the past year. Yeah. That's uh, that that number stays pretty consistent. That's um, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that uh, it, that didn't change much from the previous uh, year. the The statistics come out. April is the uh, the month that we get the uh, updated stuff, or we're supposed to every year. Um, sometimes it seems like it comes out later than that, but it's uh, it's usually in theory in April. Um, all right, Calhoun. Let's see if we can uh, if we can give this a try this time instead of me waiting and then uh, causing somebody to not get on. How about we try it this way? Who do we have on the line with hey, us? Hey, Tommy. Matrix. Hey, Rabbit. Tommy. It's Matrix. Hey, yeah. what's happening, my friend? How are you? Pretty good. How's what's going on with you? I'm living the dream, my friend. I am living the dream, and I mean that. I really am. Yeah, I, 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 when you say it, I believe it. When any anybody else says, says it, I look at him and I'm like, really? I am, I am living you, the dream. I know it's, you are. It is a lot better than the uh, the previous lifestyle. Wasn't so great. This one, uh, this one seems to be a, a lot better. Mischief Manage says, "I lurked for months before joining in. So glad I did. Now I have a new family. Well, we're glad that you did too, Mischief Managed. For real. God bless. I'm glad I did too." I'm glad that you did too. I really am. It's um, what is that right there? Do you know what? 
My phone is sending me weird texts. It just said, you have a text from Samsung. I'm not talking to Samsung. Pretty sure I owe them money. Uh, so what's going on in your world, my friend? Oh, now that I'm doing better than I was yesterday, didn't it only rained a little bit today, so I got some reprieve. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm getting ready to um, take all my. I'm drowning in mold, so for my resin work, Sorry. So uh -huh. I gotta do that tomorrow. So trying to get things done, and then I'm gonna try to walk and get outside and get some fresh air. Good for you, my friend. I'm telling you, made you there's so much. You made it something to do that. Well, you made a good point this morning. You really did. So, you know, it's it's it sticks with me. It's stuff I don't think about. And then you bring it up, and I'm like, he's right. I should go out we, more. <laughs> one of the things that is uh, that that plagues us, um, unfortunately, is that uh, the the that, longer yeah. we are a society, right? The longer that we uh, that we stick around, the more that we can get everything we want without having to do anything to get it, right? We can use a phone to have the groceries delivered. We can use the phone to have every single thing that we want brought to us like this. It no longer requires, yep. right? And the longer we do that, right? The less connection we get with uh, with the world, right? We used to talk to the grocer. We used to talk to the, right? Every All of these people that were in our sphere of influence. When I was a little kid, where my parents went to get the gas, right? At the gas station. I knew the entire family at that gas station. That was just part of, yeah, you know too. what I mean? Yeah, that we live in a really different world these days, Rabbit. We really do. And it's the, uh, if, it's, it, it started with the phones and then social media. It just kept yeah. on driving wedges. Yeah, and it keeps getting uh, the the more technology gets, um, the 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 more high tech we get, the more the the need to connect uh, with human beings in a real way, right? Where people are talking yeah. to one another, and people are exchanging thing. ideas. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. And we're doing it less and less in real life. No two ways about it. I mean, it's on, it's crazy. If you would have told me this like 20, 20 30 years ago, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> Nobody would have, right, Rabbit? Nobody would have. If you had right? said kids aren't even going to be getting driver's licenses, right? Kids aren't even going to want to go to the prom because they're going to be playing on their phones. You'd have been like, whatever, right? I mean, when I remember, I remember turning games. 16, counting the days down, right, for how long it was until uh, I was going to be able to, uh, to to get behind the wheel of a car and drive it myself. Like that was, that meant freedom. Um, to kids today, the average kid isn't getting their driver's license until over the age of 17, which means that a lot of them aren't getting until their 20s, right? It's just, it's a different world today than it was. Well, and it's, um, I, I don't think it's about I didn't get my license. I didn't get my license until I was 24 for, really? a, for a reason. If I had, but yeah, yeah, if I would have had my license, I would have, I would have drove drunk and I didn't want to do that. So I just didn't get my license until. You know, That's a good thing. Actually. I was just yes. trying to be smart about it. No, that's a that's a that's a great thing, and uh, to have that uh, you know that composure, then that's excellent. Because uh, holy hell, Calhoun, you getting kicked out? Well, I'm glad that you're back. Uh, yeah, the, uh, well, the we're gonna get we're gonna see this get worse, and I, I think some of the irony of uh, of the boat and of a lot of the other uh, channels that are popping up, and a lot of the places that we run into one another on YouTube um, and on these platforms for connection. Right, a lot of what the these what we all have in common with all of these the, these channels is that we're kind of using the uh, we're kind of using the technology that's driving a wedge between everybody to bring people together, right? And it is exactly yeah. what they hoped the internet was going to do when they uh, when they first opened it. They thought it was going to yeah, bring in, the, in, in the early nineties yeah. where everybody connected and learning from everybody. Yeah, I remember. I remember that speech too. Yeah, sounded good, didn't it? Um, yeah, it did. But you know what, Tommy? You're being the change that you want to see in the world. That's, oh, thanks, that's man. the number one thing I've learned from you, is you got to be the change that you want to see. Oh, that's so, a really cool I thing I want to thank say. you for that. Well, thank man, you. You, 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 teach a, you teach a lot of people a lot of things, you know, stuff that our parents didn't teach us. You know what I mean? Or at least oh, me. Wow. That's such a cool thing to and, say, yeah. Rabbit. That really well, is it's a very kind thing to say. 
I look, I, I mean, you're, you're a mentor to me, man. That's the way I look at you, that you're a mentor. You and, and Johnny and your son Spanx. I mean, you're, you're all good people. And you're just trying to help people, which I'm so behind. Now, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. I'm Thank so you, behind. my man. <laughs> I uh, I really appreciate that, Rabbit, and uh, and I'll probably take you up on that. I really will. I uh, when people say that, Wait, I tend to uh, I tend to call them out. <laughs> yeah, and I will. Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, as a matter of fact, and uh, and I will use it. Thank you, my friend. And you know what? Thank you for calling in. It uh, it, it means the world to me. It does. It's uh, it's I mean, uh, well. Kind. I like talking to you. I just wanted to give somebody a, a chance before I got up here. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you, my man, and you have a great night. And, and we will uh, catch you on the next one. It's uh, It never, ever gets old, Johnny Skillville. It really doesn't. It never gets old. Um, get an opportunity to uh, to talk to people that, uh, you know, that are uh, that are crew on the boat. There there really is something about um, the, uh, the connection thing um, when you're doing it in general, right? Even if you're just doing it in the uh, in the chat, there's something about um, connection in general that makes all of us uh, just a little bit better. Hold on one second. <clears throat> but right it right after Calhoun is, who do I have on the call? I got a wireless line uh, call here. Who do we got on the call? It's Mary Jones, aka Lester Crochet. I I know Mary Jones. How are you, Mary? See, see I'm doing good. <laughs> I how's, just wanted how's the to weather say in Ohio? When, it was snowing earlier today and raining, so it wow. doesn't know what it wants to do. <laughs> Man, it's like 70 degrees here, 75 degrees here, just a nice light breeze. Gorgeous, gorgeous. No, we have bipolar weather, and it chose to be bipolar today. Yeah, that but actually does happen I wanted to here say, too. I wanted to say I was on a live a couple, like a week ago on my channel, and somebody said in the live as I was talking about connection, they said, are you lonely? And I said, no, far from it. And they said, well, you need to stop streaming and go living. And I said, <laughs> I haven't lived as much since I've been doing my channel and been on the lifeboat. Because for somebody that struggles with fibromyalgia, there's days that I cannot go out. And so the lifeboat and my channel become the connection hub because it hurts oh. too much to do that stuff days. And so thank you for what you've created. And I have a lot of brothers and sisters out there and family that are there and they have my back. And I could never say thank you enough for that. Oh, that is so, that is so kind. I'll tell you what too, the, uh, it's you're uh, you become part of this in a in a way. One of the things that's beautiful about uh, about what happens here with the connections and and honestly with the friendships that get built is these uh, these ripples that we talk about. You become part of them, right? You become you become the ripple. <laughs> the the hub starts to uh, starts to go you know out, and uh, it's beautiful what you're doing with your channel and the fact that you know there are so many people currently on uh, in, in our country who do not have the ability, you know, to get out every time they want. And there are people who, who can, but since the, um, the, 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 you know, the pandemic, uh, there are a lot of people who aren't comfortable anymore. There's a lot of people who, for whatever reason, that really, that has done in a lot of our society in yeah. a lot of ways. And I think this is, Every time I go somewhere now and I meet a bunch of people, I, three or four will show up who will say to me, you know what? I don't do this. I never go out and do this. I never, you know, this is the first time that I've ever done anything like this. Or they'll say something along the lines of, I haven't done anything like this in so long. Right? It is just really one of the, I never get tired of hearing it. But the proof in that is that these connections that aren't real start to cross state lines and start to, uh, you know, um, the number of people on the, uh, on the lifeboat who I have shaken hands with or hugged, it's getting to be really astronomical. 
So uh, there aren't too many people uh, left who can start saying um, there aren't too many people out there anymore that can say this isn't uh, this isn't a real connection or this is you know somehow um, different uh, different connection than uh, than real world stuff because all of the people I know who are my best friends on Earth now every one of them I met this way I don't know what, you know so that's uh, seems pretty damn real to me. <laughs> Seems pretty damn real to me. And now, people, you know what I'm going to do? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm going to give my son a break because I'm coming back on here at uh, our normal time. But I wanted to come on and talk about these numbers. There's my kid. I was worried about him. He disappeared. He literally popped off the face of the earth there for a second. I am here. You're looking a little Axel Rose-ish today. And I mean that in the best of ways. But Yeah, I, gotta... I kind of feel like I went on tour, you know? You kind of got him an, you got this Axel vibe thing going on. There you go. If you could just do this one right here. Take me down to a paradise. There you go. See that? This is pretty and the girls are pretty. Tell me that wasn't really Axel-ish. I'm sorry. Just, uh, I want to thank you for uh, the amazing amount of effort, Calhoun, that you've been putting in over the uh, the last week. It's, yeah, man. Uh, my pleasure. It doesn't go. It does not go unnoticed. I want you to know we're going to let you out of the basement um, over the weekend, and we might even feed you. What do you think? Be pretty neat. Okay. You said it won't go unnoticed. So I had to my, say that. my brother just said, "Has he been working this week?" Oh yeah. yeah. He's, he's, got, he's got jokes. Noticed. He's got jokes. Well, he's been noticed over here. You know what I mean? You rock stars that uh, don't have to put up content, you can just you know kick back and put your feet up. Some of us are actually working. Uh, so, you know, if you had been, you might have noticed that Spank. Oh, you know what? I got a cat video to upload. I got to go. Oh, he's going to go video a cat, cat video. Calhoun. He's going to video my cat and uh, make a, a short of it. Getting a little tired of you, uh, of you videoing my cat. Seventh, we'll make sure we get you on the next one, my brother. Sorry about that. That would be on me. Um, you know what I'm going to do, Spanky? I'm going to show the cat in the basket. And then Can you tell, baby? Break. What yeah. was that, Dad? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Cat in the basket. Oh. That is the cat in the basket. I'm going to make sure to eat a bunch of food for you, Davey, all right? Uh, Davey, I promise I do feed him. I'm just kidding. He gets uh, food every fifth day, whether he needs it or yeah, not. Now and again. Yeah, he ate on Monday. Don't get, don't get all a lot dicey. Or was that uh, Sunday? Anyway, you shake it. We do feed him from time to time. I'm kidding. The kid gets taken care of. I promise. Uh, My time flies guy. on the boat. It sure does, Jason P. God bless you. Charlie Murphy, good to see you. Amber, glad that you're here. I will see hopefully all of you here in a couple of hours. I'm going to grab a nap, Calhoun. I could use one. I'll see you here in a few hours. All right.